Hi everyone. As we start moving into the 3D realm in After Effects, it soon becomes obvious that we need to find ways to improve our workflows in order to increase efficiency. To this end, I will be showing you a quick pro tip on how to distribute layers in 3D space while maintaining their original size ratio based on the position of the camera. For that, I will be using a Illustrator file that I downloaded from the web and I distributed all of the different elements of this scene into their own layers in, in Illustrator. Then I went ahead and brought that into After Effects as a uh, composition and uh, I made it composition retain layer sizes. So as you can see, all of the layers have been placed into their specific uh, spot within the composition in After Effects. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I uh, turn all of those layers into 3D layers by clicking on the switch for all of them. And then what I want to do is I want to create a camera. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure I pick a camera that doesn't distort my view too much. So in this case, 50 mil is fine. And uh, actually, before I do this, let's go ahead and take a look at the composition settings for this. And as you notice, the composition settings are telling me that this is 2430 by 1080, which is bigger than what I need. So I want to reduce this to 1920 by 1080. What that is telling you is that the content that you bring in in order to do what we're about to do should be a little larger in order to create like what we want to do is parallax in this case. So um, you need to make sure that the content is slightly larger so they have space to move. However, for distributing the layers and maintaining their, their size, with respect to the camera, you don't have they don't have to be larger. They don't have to be wider or taller. They can be the exact size of the composition. This will maintain their size. This technique will maintain their size. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to change my composition to 1920 by 1080, which is what the file that the file size that I want. And so you notice that my layers go a little bit beyond beyond the left and right of the composition. So with that done, I want to go ahead and create a new camera. And this camera will be a 50 mil camera. I'm going to choose that because I don't want major significant distortion on the way this is looking at the world. So instead of using a wide angle like a 24 lens, 24 mil, or a long lens like a 200 or something like that, I want to make sure that I am half in the middle of the way. And I want to leave everything else as is. I want to make sure that this is a one node camera, though. That's what I want to start with. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Click OK on that. And you'll notice that there was no significant change on the way the world is seen through the camera. Then at this point, what I want to do is I want to create a null object as well. This null object, I want to rename controller. You don't have to rename it, but as you know, in my workflows, I prefer to name all of the layers based on what they do. In this case, that's what's going to be controlling everything in order for us to move things and distribute things into 3D space. I want to make sure that I turn it into a 3D layer at this point, and I want to make that controller a child of the camera. So I'm going to drag the value of the controller to the camera that I'm going to pick with it. I'm going to go ahead and open up the position for that controller and the position for the camera. You'll notice that these two values match the camera being negative and so that means the controller because it was at the zero 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 point it's say it's about that distance from the camera. I want to zero out that value for the null object. To see what happens I'm going to switch my viewport from one view to two views. And make sure that you change this one on the left hand side to the top view. If yours is not on the top view, select it by clicking on it, making sure that the little blue arrows in the corners are active. That tells you that that is the active viewer. And then you go ahead and from the drop down menu, pick top. That way you see your camera from the top and down here, this line is all of the artwork that you have stacked up in your composition. Now, what we want to do at this point is I want to go ahead and change the position of the controller from here to the camera. And to do that, what I want to do is I make sure that this value for z-axis is zero. When you do that, basically the controller moves to the position of the parent, which is the camera in this case. And that's all I needed that connection for. So now what I want to do is I, I, what I want to do is I want to remove the parenting from the controller, null object, and now I have just moved it there. Now, with that in mind, I can go ahead and close the position values for both controller and camera. And what I want to do after this is make select, make sure that I select all the layers that I want to distribute in 3D, in this case, all of the ones from the composition, and make them children of the controller. So I'm going to go ahead and make that. All of these are children of the controller. And what that's going to do now is basically anything I do to the controller is going to be re 
reflected on the different children. This, what I want to do, though, for in this case, is I want to start using the scaling value for the controller in order to change the position of the objects. Now, that might not seem obvious at the beginning, but you'll see what this does in just a second. What I want to do is I want to leave the snow layer, which is the for, for front layer foremost. I'm going to just turn it off. I don't want to see that snow right now. But now what I want to do is I want to select these trees right here, these two large trees, and I want to leave them where they are. So for doing that, I want to go ahead and remove the parenting from that layer. So I'll go ahead and select none from that layer. And then I am going to scale the controller to, let's say, 150%. And you'll notice that something moved up here, and what, but nothing moved in, that, in my actual composition. So let me undo that really quick, Control Z. You'll notice that I am going to redo it, Control Shift Z. And it moved all those layers back, but nothing changed in my visual here in my composition. Let me go ahead and now deselect the front trees. And I'm also going to deselect the front, the front snow. So those two will be, I, I'm going to go ahead and remove the parenting from those. And then I'm going to go ahead and rescale my controller once again. I'm going to go to, let's say, 200%. You'll notice that it keeps on pushing layers into 3D space, but nothing is happening in my composition. And the reason for that is because the scaling of the controller, basically what it's doing is maintaining that aspect ratio and the size of the layers based on the original size of the layers with reference to the position of the camera. So if I keep on doing this, let's say mid snow is now uh, at about 200. Let's go ahead and place the houses. Let's remove the parenting from mid snow and let's move the houses to about 250. So I'll increase the scale to 50 on my uh, null object, and it moved the houses to 250, but yet I don't see any change here. Now, uh, let's keep on doing this really quick. I'm going to pause for just a second, and I'm going to keep on redistributing this by about 50 pixels, uh, by about 50% each time. So I'll be right back. Now, I got to the point where I am about to get to the city and mountains, which are pretty far away. So in this case, instead of only changing uh, uh, 50 percentage points, I'm going to change it significantly. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, move that layer to about, let's say, 800 percent. And then the moon, I am going to move to about mm, 1800 percent. So it's very, very far away. And then finally, my cloud will be at about my cloudy BG, my background, my sky will be at around, I want to say, um, 2,500. So that's far away in percentage points from the original position. Now, let's go ahead and turn that off really quick. Now, what's going to happen is that if I go ahead and select my camera, right-click it and go camera, create an orbit null. Now, I have a controller this orbit null for the camera allows me to control that camera. It attaches it to it and it turns it into a 3D layer, you know, by default. Now I can go ahead and change the position of that orbit null to control my camera, let's say on the X axis. So, so let me bring this back to the one view uh, only so that I can see what my camera is seeing, my active camera. And if I move this on the X axis, you can see that I've created parallax fairly fast without having to push and resize all the layers. It maintained the actual ratio and size of the layers with respect to my camera. It, had, it has distributed all of my layers according to how they were on the original composition. So this workflow should save you a lot of time on placing items in 3D space and uh, resizing in order to fit your composition to try to match your original artwork.